Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word from the Lord. I'm glad you're with us tonight. We have got a show lined up for you. And as Caleb's already talked about, uh, we're getting ready for the 10 meeting tonight. But before we get into our lesson, we're going to uh, give you our content information, the Word from the Lord at gmail.com. It's how you can reach me, 276-340-2653. It's how you can reach me by phone. And I hope that you will give me a call and let me know uh, what you're thinking. If you're interested in a study from God's Word, we'll be glad to come out and have a Bible study with you. Friends, we just uh, uh, look forward to meeting people who are looking for the truth. And that's what we are always looking for. You know, the Bible says that <clears throat> God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But Jesus, in that same context, said that God is looking for individuals. And so, really, we're looking for God is looking for individuals who are looking uh, for him. Notice this in John chapter 4 and verse 22, <clears throat> 23. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. So God is looking for individuals and, uh, uh, who are looking for Him. And we're looking for individuals who are looking for God as well. And if you're one of those individuals, we want to meet you and get to know you and study God's Word with you. That's just the kind of people we are. So, this is, this is why we are here. Now, I like this time of year <clears throat> because it's kickoff time. I know probably a lot of people are thinking, yeah, that's right, football starts tonight, and this is the first season of real football, football that counts, you know. But I'm not talking about football. We're talking about the fall tent meeting. We have a tent meeting in June, uh, <clears throat> and we have a tent meeting in the fall, and this is the kickoff of the fall tent meeting. And friends, uh, we hope that you're uh, as excited about this as we are. We're always looking forward to tent meetings because it's a time when people from the community come out. They uh, uh, Sometimes we meet them for the first time. Maybe they've been watching the program and they uh, maybe never call in, but they've come out to the tent. We hope that you will uh, be one of those individuals. If you've never come out to... Uh, uh, be a part of our tent meetings. I really hope that you will. Uh, I believe it's a great, great opportunity. And the reason why is because of what we do at the tent. Maybe it's what we don't do. Now, we're talking about football, <clears throat> or we kind of talked about football. But one thing, if you're talking about uh, football and how it's like a tent meeting, well, in a way, a tent meeting is not like football because there won't be any passing. No passing to play. You know, we don't take up any tithes, tithes, or offerings. We don't pass the play, pass the chicken bucket. We never do that. We never ask people from the community to contribute to doing what we're doing. Now, if for no other reason, I would think someone would come out and say, I just want to see if what they're saying is true. Do they really not pass the play? Do they really not take up any offerings? Do they really not pass a collection plate to have a love offering for someone's coming in? I mean, we've got guys coming in from, from out of state, and, and you, don't, you don't pass the plate and give them a little love offering? No. The reason why they're coming is because they love. That's actually their love offering. They actually come because they love lost souls. They love the truth, and they love to help individuals who are trying to reach the lost souls. So... <clears throat> the individuals that are going to be preaching on the tent, uh, aside from uh, us local guys, are individuals who are basically showing you their love offering by actually being here. And yeah, we may we probably we give them a little gas money and we put them up and in, in uh, some place to, to stay. But you know what? We don't. We're not just. You know, this is not a vacation for them. When they come out, we go a door knocking and we have Bible studies and we put them to work. We work them like a rented mule. And so there's not going to be any passing. You're talking about football. Yeah, it's kickoff time, but there's no passing to play. And I wish you'd come out and just see if this is the case. See if what we're saying is true. Well, unlike football, there's no, no cheerleading, no, no dancers. We don't get up and hoop and holler and run around like chickens with a head cut off. And women folk don't uh, get up and, you know, flop their dresses up and down and, and, and so forth. We don't do any of that. We do things decently in order. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, <clears throat> notice 
in verse 40, he says, let all things be done decently and in order. And friends, that's exactly how we conduct ourselves. We, we do things in a very orderly fashion. The, uh, we, we sing. We come to order. We sing. We have a prayer. We have a, a prayer. We have the preaching. If there's, a, if there's a question that needs to be asked, you know, anybody wants to ask a question, we have a time allotted for that. It's very decent and it's very ordered. Now, I know I've heard the preachers and I've heard the, the pastors, bishops, rabbis, and so forth in this area. And they say they want to get out of their dignified self. And somebody needs to lose their dignity. You know, that's what they do. They get up and hoop and holler and skip around the church building and roll on the floor. And it's very undignified. But God wants things to be done decently and in order. And that's exactly what that means. It means in a dignified fashion. Friends, we are talking about the Word of God. We're talking about following what God says. We have respect and reverence for doing things the way God says do them. And so, if you, if you want to see something different, you want to experience something uh, that's totally different from what the rest of the religious world is doing, you need to come to the tent because it won't be what you would get anywhere else. You want dancing and cheerleading and, and hooping and hollering and loud music and concerts? Well, that's for all, that you can go just take your pick. Any religion, any religious group in this area, just about, you can find that very thing. But you won't find it in, under the tent. You won't find it in our regular worship assemblies because we do things decently in order. And so I'm hoping that you'll come out and see if these things are really so. Will there any be any plastic in the plate? Nope. As a matter of fact, everything's free. Everything is free. When you walk into the tent, there'll be a table, and it'll probably have DVDs and tracks and books and other kind of literature that's free. It's free. You know, not, not free with a $25 love offering. No, not, not that. It's free. You want a copy of the uh, DVDs, the tent? It's free. Now, you may have to sign your name up so that when they're all done, we can get you a copy. But other than that, that's all you have to do for it. I mean, there's, let me tell you, folks, getting bit, uh, Bible material from members of the Church of Christ is easier than a Baptist uh, saying, once saved, always saved. I mean, that's just how, it's, 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 it's a lot easier than that. I mean, it's easier than the Baptist plan of salvation, right? I mean, the Baptists say, well, you got to believe. Well, under our tent, you, you don't even have to say anything. You don't have to ask Jesus to do anything. You just come up and see it, pick it up, take it, right? That's just how easy it is. It's free. So if you want to study the Bible and you're looking for information on what the Bible has to say, you need to come to the tent. You need to come to the tent. So unlike a football game, you know, we're kicking this off, but unlike a football game, no passing the plate, no cheerleading, but there will be some running. There will be some running. You said, well, James, I thought you just said there's not going to be any hooping and hollering and running around like chickens with your head cut off. Well, there's none of that, but there will be some running. And this is what we're talking about. 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 1. I want you to notice what Paul said. And friends, this is what our tent meetings are all about. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's see if we make sure this is as big as I can get it so we can read it at home. <clears throat> Paul said, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Now I want you to notice some of these words here. I want you to notice what Paul is saying. Paul is writing to the brethren in Thessalonica. He's in Corinth, and he's writing a letter back to them. This is actually the second letter that he's written to them, the second letter that we know of. And this is what he says. He says, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. Now that word free course actually means run. It actually means run. Pray that the word of the Lord may run. Now, if you want to see how that word is used in other places, we can go to 1 Corinthians 9, and verse 24. Paul said, Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all, one receive the prize, so run that ye may obtain. So he's talking about running a race. Same word. 
Pray that the Word of God runs. Pray that it runs. Pray that it spreads. Pray that it gets ground. That's what we're talking about. Galatians 5 and verse 7, same word again. Paul said, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? <clears throat> All right, so Paul saying, pray that the word will run. Now, friends, when we put the tent up, we buy TV time, uh, and when we are out door knocking, this is what we're doing. We're making sure that the word is running, that it has free course, that it's free flowing. That it is getting ground. That's what we're trying to do. You know, when I think about the Word, when I think what Paul is saying here, is the idea of making sure that nothing is hindering it from going. You know, when you talk about water running, it just, water, when water starts running, there's no telling where it goes. There, there's no telling where water goes. If you've ever had a leaky roof, Matt might know something about this. When you have a leaky roof, you know, water may come in. It may be coming into your house one place. Not that Matt has a, had a leaky roof. I'm talking about up here at the station had a leak. But, you know, water may come into the, uh, to the building or the house one place. But it starts leaking at a totally different place. You know why? Because water runs. Water takes the path of least resistance. And it will go anywhere and everywhere. And that is what Paul is saying. Pray that the Word just runs everywhere. And friends, I can guarantee you, the Word of God is going to run everywhere in Eden. We're going to do all we can just to see that it is flowing and running free course anywhere and everywhere. And so that is what we're praying for. That is what we're striving to do. When we put the tent up, we want everybody to know that they can come and study the Bible at the gospel tent. They can come and feel free to find out if what we're saying is true. And that's what Paul's saying. Paul says, you know, pray that there's no hindrances. Because sometimes there are hindrances that try to stop the spread of the gospel. I want you to notice this in 2 Timothy 2 and verse 9. Look what Paul says. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 9. Now Paul is in prison. Paul is, is in prison. He said, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Now, he, wh how was he suffering trouble as an evildoer? Because he was doing evil? No. But he was in jail as an evildoer. He was in jail like someone who does evil. But he says, Even unto bonds. Even to the point that I'm in chains. I'm in bondage. I'm, I'm tied up. He says, But the word of God is not bound. You can't stop the word from spreading. Now, individuals have tried. Individuals have tried to stop it. You may recall a couple of tent meetings uh, years ago in the tent meeting in Danville. You know, everybody in Danville seemed to come out and want to stop the tent meeting. You can't stop, you can't stop the word of God. God's word's not bound. It's going to get out. It's going to get out. People call in on, on our programs. They call Dr. Charles. Y'all need to get them out, off the air. You can't stop the Word of God. You can't stop the Word of God. Even if we weren't on the air, we'd still be out talking about it. Why? Because you can't stop the Word of God. It's not bound. You can't put it in a chain. We believe the Word of God is what saves people's souls. James 1.21 Receive the engrafted Word that is able to save your soul. It's the power of God to salvation, Romans 1 and verse 16. So you can't bind the Word of God. And so Paul says, pray that it has free course. Now, friends, that's what you'll find of the tent. You'll find there'll be more Bible preached in one night of the tent than probably what you've heard in a year where you are. Now, I'm not exaggerating. I've heard people, ta I've had people tell, them, tell me that. I've had people tell me that. I've heard more Bible in the short period of time that I've been with the Church of Christ that all the time I've been in all these other denominations. Now, friends, that's just a fact. You know why? Because we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, and we believe it's what can change lives, and we believe that it is what is going to save your souls. That's why we spend so much time and effort on it. That's why we spend so much time in it. 
That's why we make sure that what you're getting, when you ask what does the Bible say, is we make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. So when you talk about what's going to happen at the tent, there'll be a lot of running. It'll be a running of the word of God having free course. And that's how it'll be glorified. You know, here's how, here's how we strive to be. Let's skip down and look at Habakkuk 2 and verse 2. Habakkuk 2 and verse 2. That's kind of a hard, hard word to say, Habakkuk. 2 and verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Now that's not talking about reading while you run. But it's talking about it so plain that once you read it, you'll be able to just take off with it. You'll be able to run once you read it. And friends, I can assure you that when you come to the, to the gospel tent, when you come to a tent meeting that, we're, that we put up, and you hear the preaching and teaching, friends, it's going to be plain, it's going to be simple. You know why? Because we want you to get it and then run with it. We want you to get it and just take off with it, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, talk to your family with it. See, we're, trying, we're doing our very best to make it so simple that you'll be able to run once you see it. And we put all the scriptures up on the screen so that you can, so that you can read it. You can know that what you're hearing is indeed from the Word of God. Make it plain. Make it plain. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it plain. Now, if you have any questions about what is said, you know what? Like, we, like we've said, there'll be a time when you can ask questions. You can ask us a question about anything that was said if it wasn't plain enough. Because we want to make it so plain you can't understand it. Now, friends, I don't know of any other place, and I've been to a number of places where the, they were having revivals or gospel meetings, even the tent that, that I now own, that we're putting up, used to belong to a man, and when I went to his tent, they wouldn't let me ask a question. I mean, they circle around me like a bunch of coyotes and, you know, a pack of wolves. They didn't want to answer questions. But under the gospel tent, under the tent where you're hearing the gospel preached, all the words are going to be running left and right. It's going to be running all over the place. Why? It's got a free course. We're going to turn the word loose and let it run. Now, when Paul was asking the the brethren at Thessalonica to pray for him. Look what he says. Pray that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified. And be glorified. Friends, do you ever stop and think about how many people glorify everything but what God wants glorified? We promote the Word of God. We hold it forth. That's what Paul said. Paul said to the Philippians, notice this. If I can get it up here right. Oh. Uh, Philippians 2.15 he said that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. That's Philippians 2, 15. Verse 16. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We hold forth the word of life. We exalt it. We elevate it. You know why? Because it is the Word of God. It's the Word of God. It's what can save your soul. And so we want the Word of God to be glorified. We want it to be glorified. Now, when I hear people in the religious world talking today, you know what they glorify? They glorify everything but the Word of God. They glorify the Spirit that gave the Word. Everybody talking about the Spirit. The Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. The Spirit moved me, gave me a warm, fuzzy feeling. It gave me, you know, Holy Ghost bumps and everything. Got the heebie-jeebies. Ooh, just stood up. I mean, you know, 
People calling in and oh, and they're jib jabbing this and that, and that's the Holy Ghost. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in John 16 and verse 13, <clears throat> Jesus said, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine and will show it unto you. The Holy Spirit wasn't going to glorify himself. He simply guided the New Testament writers into revealing all truth. The word of God. The word that Christ was given. The word that Christ gave to his apostles. That is what should be glorified. Friends, when you say, well, you need something more than the Bible, you're not glorifying the Bible. You're actually indicting God. You're actually saying, well, God can't write a book that we all can understand. But friends, we believe you can understand the Bible. The only hindrances people have in understanding the Bible are the ones that they put in front of themselves or that someone puts in front of it for them. You can understand the Bible. Now, if the word is not flowing freely to you, you put a hindrance in, in, the, in the way. You try to stop it. Maybe with a man's doctrine, a man's creed, catechism. But the word of God is easy to understand. It's, it's simple. And so Paul said, pray that the word of God may have free course and be glorified. Now, how can the word be glorified? How can the word be glorified? Look at this. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 49. <clears throat> Acts chapter 14, 13 and verse 49. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. The word of the Lord was published. It was proclaimed. It was preached. It was broadcast throughout all the region. That's part of the way the word is glorified. That's part of the way that, that, that it's glorified. Because it's spread out. Friends, that's why we do what we do. We don't have, we don't have little three or four day so-called revivals. That's when we put the tent up for two weeks. Giving you time and opportunity, several opportunities, many opportunities. They'll come out and hear the Word of God. That's why we're out knocking doors. To invite you, to give you opportunity to hear the engrafted Word that can save your soul. That's why we do that, because we're trying to publish the, the Word of the Lord throughout all the region. That's part of the way it's glorified. But you know what really the glorifying of the Word is? Once it's published... What glorifies is really this. Look at verse 48. Acts 13, 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. How did they glorify the word of the Lord? And as many as were obtained, obtained to, ordained to eternal life believed, and the word of the, of the Lord was published throughout all the region. When individuals hear the word of God and obey it, that is when the Word is glorified. Because that is when the Word is shown to change people's lives. That's when the power of the Word is demonstrated. That's how it's glorified. So says, well, I believe the Bible. Did it change your life? Oh, it changed my life. How did it change your life? You're still in a Baptist church. You're still in a Methodist church. You're still in a church that's not even in the Bible. Oh, the Bible changed my life, but you're still cursing. Still using bad language. Still telling racial joke, racist jokes. Didn't really change your life, did it? Oh, the Bible changed my life. Oh, but you're still shacking up, right? Still playing the lottery, right? Oh, the Bible changed my life. Well, apparently it didn't. See, the Word is not glorified unless it changes your life. The Word is not glorified unless <clears throat> in your life the power of, of God's word is demonstrated. And so, they glorify the word of the Lord. Why? 
because they believed it. They obeyed it. And then they continued spreading it. <clears throat> there are some members of the Lord's church that glorified the word of God when they, when they believed. They obeyed the gospel and that, that shows that the word was glorified. But the second part of glorifying the word of God is publishing it, going out. And the reason why members of the Lord's church do what we do is because we show not only has the word changed our lives and helped us to find salvation that is only in Christ, by believing the gospel, but we also publish it throughout all the area. That's how it changes our lives. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19, He says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. If the word is really glorified, then you do what Jesus said do. You go and you teach. And what do you teach? You teach them that when they believe, they go and teach. They go and teach. They go and teach it. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Just like the instructions on that bottle of shampoo, right? You wet, you lather, you rinse, and repeat. Now, I don't know when you stop doing that, you know. Rinse and repeat, you just, I guess till the soap's all gone. I don't know. Maybe it tells you to do it how many times. But when the Bible is talking about what you do as a Christian, when you obey the gospel, you teach others, and you teach them that now they've obey, obeyed the gospel, they teach others, and they teach others, and they teach others, and it never stops. And so that's how the Word is glorified. That's how the Word is glorified. So friends, this will be a great, great opportunity for you to see what happens at the tent. You'll see, you'll see the word running free course. And you'll be able to, you will hear preaching right out of the Bible. And it'll be a great opportunity for you to investigate the Lord's church. And you'll see if what you may have heard about the Lord's church is true or not. Let's, let's see if what you've heard about it, you know, Let's, let's see if what I've heard about it, if it's true or not. Because it may be that you've heard some things about the Lord's church that sounds kind of fishy. Maybe you kind of look crossways at them. Maybe when someone comes up and knocks on the door and says, I'm, a, I'm from the Church of Christ, and you go, I don't think I want that. Why? What have you heard about us? What have you heard about us? You know, one time we, passed, we had a flyer made up. We was having it to people. And it said, it said, we're not Mormons and we're not Jehovah's Witness and we don't want your money. Because that's, those are the three things that people think when they see someone walking up. Oh, it's Jehovah's Witness. No. Nope. Oh, it's the Mormons. No. Nope. Is somebody wanting money? No. Nope. Not either one of those. We don't want your money. We, we're not Jehovah's Witness and we're not, and we're not Mormons. We're members of the Lord's church but we, and we do have something for you free. We're in Martinsville <clears throat> knocking doors and I walked up on the steps and the man said, what are you selling? I said, I'm not selling anything. I'm giving something away. Oh, really? What is it? Salvation, the gospel. Hand him a flyer. Now, here's what we're talking about, friend. You may have heard something about the Lord's church and you may think you know about the Church of Christ. You may have a preconceived idea about the Church of Christ, what we believe, what we teach, what we're like. You say, well, James, I watch you on TV. I know what you teach. I watch you on TV. I know what you like. You, ha you, you haven't even met me, probably. You may have met me, but you haven't met all the brethren. You see, people say, well, I, I think I know you. I see you on TV. Really? Why don't you come out and find out for, your, for yourself? I know what y'all do. Do you? Have you ever been to any of our assemblies? See, here's what you may have heard. I'm just going to play this video clip, and I hope that it plays here. Of, and this is just two or three people talking. But this is kind of typical of what people say about us or what they, 
their ideas, their preconceived ideas about us. Now that's just four people. One, one man says, well, you're a judgmental, hypocritical, hypocritical liar. You know, the, ne the next lady says, well, you, you, uh, uh, you, don't re you don't get that stuff out of the Bible. You don't read the Bible like we do. Well, that may be true. I don't read the Bible like y'all do. I don't read it with, you know, my daddy's glasses on my head and see the things that daddy read. And then you had the Baptist preacher going, well, y'all te teach another gospel. No, I don't pre teach another gospel. I teach this gospel. And then the lady said, well, you're building an occult church. And there's others. You know, one, one man told Johnny, he, you know, he's a money-grubbing, lying, whatever. Money-grubbing? I just told you, friends, we never passed the bu bucket. We never passed a plate. How's that money-grubbing? See that? You, you've heard something. You've believed something. You've... You got this idea in your head somewhere. Why don't you come out and see for yourself? Building an occult church? Friends, I, it's almost laughable when people say that about the Lord's church. I, it, I, I don't like it because I know the Lord's church is not a cult. But it is laughable when people say, well, y'all in a cult. Y'all just a cult. And we're saying, here's the phone lines are open. A cult doesn't let you ask questions. A cult is very secretive. Closed doors. No, don't you can't you can't scrutinize us. You can't see all the goings on in the inner working. We're saying we're out here in the open. We're putting a tent up, and you can come and get any information you want, and you can ask a question. That's not what a cult does, friend. That is not what cults do. Now, why would someone say that? Because they haven't examined the Church of Christ. They have not really been honest about finding out about the church you read about in the Bible. Now, are you going to come out and investigate? See, do you, do you know anything about the church of Christ and what do you know about it? Where did you get it? Where did you get your information? Is it true? You know, sometimes somebody might say, well, is there anything good about the Church of Christ? Can there be anything good about the Church of Christ? Well, come and see. Come and see. You know, there was a, there was a man in the Bible. His name was Philip. And Jesus called him. <clears throat> John chapter 1, verse 43. The day following... Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law of the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. You may be thinking, <clears throat> Can there be any good people in the church of Christ? Well, come and see. Come and see. Come and see just how welcome you are. Come and see how warmly you'll be treated. Come and see how nice it will be. Come and see how, you know, uh, people interact with one another. Come and see how our services are. Come and see how orderly they are. Come and see how we do what we say. Just come and see. You're on the word from the Lord. Uh, yes, let's speak to James, please. You're on the air. This is James. Hey, James. Uh, hey Brother James. Uh, what you were just describing there just a few minutes ago, what does that sound like? Uh, which part? It sounds to me like denominational churches. Uh, they're real secretive, don't want nobody oh. to know what they're doing. Exactly right. Exactly right. Can't ask any questions, that's for sure. 
There you go. You don't question the pastor. Don't question the head Come dog. Come out you know? to the tent and find out what the Church of Christ is all about. That's all I can say. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I didn't recognize the caller there for a minute there. That's exactly right. And that's what I'm saying, friends. The things that people say about us, really, they're portraying the things they see from the domination world, and they think that's what we're like. Come and see. Just come and see. Just come and see if it's true. Now, are you going to make up your mind about the Lord's church before you check it out? I just want to ask you that. You think about this. You're, you, you see the tent. You drive by. They're 80 on 87 <clears throat> North Oakland Street. You're going to drive by the fairground. You're going to see the tent. You're going to go, boy, there's a bunch of crazy people there. Really? And you haven't even come and seen it. Are you going to make up your mind without checking us out? Why don't, why don't you come ask us a question and just see how you treat it? Now, people who make up their minds without checking it out, without checking it out, that's the same attitude people had who killed Jesus. Hmm. Is that the way you want to be? In John 7, verse 51. John 7, and verse 51. Now this, let's back up one. Let's back up... Uh, Verse 46. The officers answered, Never man spake like this. Then answered them Pharise Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? Have, ye, have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? But the people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So they've already made up their mind about Jesus and all the people that, are fo that were following Jesus. And then Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night, being one of them, Doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? Now, that's what I'm asking you, friends. Are you listening to what your preacher says about the, the church of Christ? That we're a cult, that we believe a different gospel? You might be surprised. You might be surprised. You may think that we don't believe in saved by faith. Why don't you come out here? You may believe we don't believe in saved by grace. Why don't you come out here? You may believe that we're a cult. Come out and see. I promise you, you won't be forced to drink any Kool-Aid. Just come out and see. Just come out and see. But, but don't decide what, what the Lord's church is like before you come out and see. You know, I know of individuals that, that thought, this is, this is what it's going to be like. I'm going to go to one of those churches, and it's gonna, they're going to be mean and hateful. No, not right. People said all, all kinds of things about, about the Lord's church. Oh, uh, uh, J.C. Richardson was doing his study, you know. He was doing his study on all the different denominations. He said about the Church of Christ, I'd be surprised. To find out that it wasn't predominantly white. Well, so what if it's predominantly white? What does that mean? Does that mean that we're racist? Does that mean that everybody in the Lord's church is racist? Won't you come out and see? Won't you come out and see who's there? You know? I, I think it's amazing how many people come out and then they, they actually see somebody they know. See somebody they work with. Used to work with. You think we're racist? Come out and see. You don't believe that just because we've debated the Nation of Islam and the KKK, you think we're still racist? Come out and see. Just come out and see. See how we interact with one another. Just come out and see. Check it out. Proverbs 18 to verse 13. I know you don't want to be this way. But Proverbs 18, 13 says, He that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and a shame unto him. You think you know what the Lord's church is like. You think you know what all the people in the Lord's church are like. And you hadn't even had time to investigate. You hadn't even given it, 
You hadn't even given it the first chance to see what it's like. You're going to answer the matter before you hear it. That's a folly. Shame on you. Shame on you, friend. What are they saying? Won't you come out? I guarantee you it'll be the nicest group of people you've ever met. I, I, I can promise you that. I can promise you that. Now, are you going to come out? Wellsman said, well, I'm not going to come out. Why not? Well, you don't believe like I do. You don't believe like I do. You know, <laughs> I, uh, I find it interesting when people say that. They don't want to come to the Lord Church because we don't believe like they do. I want you to look at this in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 22. You know, sometimes when you read a passage, if you don't stop and just ask some questions, you may miss some very important things. But listen to this. In Acts 14, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 22. Now, usually when we read this, we're talking about tongues and things like that. But listen to what Paul says. He says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will then I say you're mad? Now a lot of times we read this verse and we go, see, that's why all y'all jib-jabbing, y'all just going to make people think you're crazy. And that's true. He says, but if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not or unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. Now here's the question. That, like I said, sometimes we miss because we're looking at something else. But did you ever consider who it was that went to church with the Corinthians? Those unbelievers? Now, why would an unlearned or an unbeliever, why would they even be in church? Look, this is the first day of the week. They're all together in one place. We know that's, that's when the church came together in one place, for sure, was on the first day of the week. And here in the midst of their assembly was someone who didn't believe what they believed. Why were they there? Why were they there? Why would unbelievers be in the assembly of believers? Did you ever stop and think? Why would the believers want the unbelievers there? Did you ever stop and think about that? I mean, there's a number of times we're told to, believe, to leave a place because we don't believe like they believe. Or we don't teach what they think. That's what, that's what Calvin Adams said. Y'all don't, don't teach what we teach. You, you don't teach what I teach. All the more reason for me to stay, isn't it? Isn't that the point? Why do you think these folks were in the assembly of the Corinthians, even though they were unlearned or unbelievers? Wasn't it to teach them? I mean, look what Paul said. He said when, when the unbeliever comes in, right, the unlearned and the unbelievers, what will happen to them? <clears throat> they are convinced of all. He is judged of all. That is, he's convinced. He, he's, he's given some kind of information that causes him to change his mind. You've convinced me. I find it very interesting when someone says, well, we won't let you ask questions because you don't believe like we do. I remember when we went over to Danville to the... Uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist uh, church over there where Andre Sanders was the preacher. And he wasn't there when we went, but Andre Sanders was the Seventh-day Adventist pastor, bishop, rabbi, whatever they call him, who said he would come on TV and debate Seventh-day Adventist doctrine, but then he didn't. And we went over to his assembly, and we asked them if we would be allowed to ask questions during our Bible class. And they said, only if you believe what we believe. Now, I may be not getting the exact wording right, but if one of the brethren that was with me remembers that, then uh, um, you can call in to verify or change or whatever. But it was the idea of, well, we only take questions from people who believe what we believe or questions about the things that we believe. In other words, if you don't believe what we believe, we don't take questions. 
But what's the point? What is the point of being in an assembly with individuals who don't believe the same thing you do if you can't ask questions? Why would you even want them there? So, I mean, isn't that the time when you're going to demonstrate how right you are? Wouldn't that be the time when you demonstrate the truth that you claim to have? I mean, why would a Baptist preacher run you out if you're asking questions and you're lost? He believes you're lost. Why would they run you off? I don't know. That's what they do at Riverview Baptist. That's what they do at Osborne Baptist. That's what they do down here at Charity Baptist. That's what they do over here at Grace Baptist. That's what they've done at Gary Grubbs. Gary Grubbs, there in Eden. Uh, we had a brother went up to one of his tent meetings and Gary Grubbs met him at the car and said, there's no need in you coming here. Now that's Gary Grubbs. Gary Grubbs who's been in how many different churches? In, uh, in Eden. And what it looks like, it looks like he puts them in debt and then he leaves. Just observation. Now, why would a preacher do that? Why would a preacher run someone off who's just there to ask a question? Or there to investigate? Friends, if you don't believe like we do, we want you there. <clears throat> and if you don't believe like we do, we want you to ask a question. We want, we want you to question us. Why do you do what you do? Why do you say what you say? Why did you, why did you say that? Why do you believe this? And we'll give you a Bible answer. And if you don't want to ask it publicly, hey, pull somebody over to the side, ask it privately. But we'll answer your question. We'll answer your question. Now, let me show you the right attitude. If you'll come to our tent, this is the attitude we want you to have. <clears throat> In Acts 17, verses 19 and 20, they didn't believe what Paul was preaching. They didn't believe what Paul was preaching. But notice this. They took him and brought him unto the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. We have never heard this, this idea before. We have never heard of this doctrine before. But we want to hear about it. We want to hear about it. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Now, you know what? The Athenians, in a way, are a lot, were a lot better Bible students than a lot of people in the denominations today. At least they were willing to hear something that was different than what they believed. You know what? I, I would love to hear someone talk about what they believed that was different than what, from what I believe. I would love to have a Baptist preacher stand right here and tell us all what he believes. It'd be strange to my ears because I think it's strange to the Bible. But I'd still love to hear it. Oh, I'd love to hear it. And then I'd love for you to hear what the Bible has to say. But you know what? They, they must not really love what they have to say. Because they don't like to say it. They don't want people to hear it. See, I, I, I love what I have to say. I love what the Bible has to say. And I love saying it. Sometimes I like to hear myself say it. But nonetheless, I like to hear it. I like to hear what the Bible says. I like to hear what I believe. I like to hear someone else say what I believe, but I also like to hear what people don't believe that's contrary to what I believe. I like to hear that. Let's discuss it. Let's have some discussion about it. I'd love for Marty Roberts to come back, come back on like he said he would and let's discuss the Godhead. I'd, I'd love that. I'd love for Jerry Carter to come back on TV and let's discuss Baptist doctrine. I'd love that. I'd love for Dwayne King or Phil Kidd. I'd love for them to come on. And let's discuss some of these strange things. Things that are strange to our ears. Oh, I'd love to hear it. 
If we're saying something that's strange to your ears, friends, why not come on? Come on and ask, ask, ask us a question. Investigate. Now let me ask you this. We've got a, just a few minutes left. You know, when Paul in 2 Thessalonians, I want to go back there for just a minute. But when Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, he said, pray that the word of God may have free course, that it may be glorified. What stopped the word from running or what hindered the word from running, from flowing? Verse 2, he says, and that we may be able and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. You know what hinders the gospel? I don't think it stops it. What hinders it is unreasonable and wicked men. And the men that Paul were talking, was talking about were that very thing. They were unreasonable. They were wicked. They were lewd, wicked, immoral, malicious men. Those are the kind of individuals that don't really care about the truth. That want to hear it stopped. Or what, that, would, that would want it stopped. At any price. Because... They don't reason. They're wicked. And they don't reason. That's the kind of people we're talking about. See, Paul was in Corinth at the time when he wrote that. And he was writing to the Thessalonians. And the Thessalonians knew what Paul was going through. Because if you read back in Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, Paul was run out of Thessalonica. And the Jews of Thessalonica drug a man out named Jason, drug him out and, and uh, you know, drug him out of his house. And so they were very, very mean and, and oppressive and uh, persecuting the Christians. And so here Paul's in Corinth and he says, you know what, this might be Thessalonica all over again. He says, pray. So he writes back to Thessalonians and he says, pray for me. Pray for me that we can be delivered from these unreasonable and wicked men. Now, the reason why Paul said that is because look at what they did. In Acts 18 and verse 12, Acts 18 and verse 12, when Gallio was, uh, uh, Gallio was deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Well, these are the people. These are these wicked men, unreasonable men, saying... This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to open his mouth, Galileo said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason, would that I should bear with you. But if it's a question of words and names, and of your law, look ye to it. I will be no judge of such matters. And he drove them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of those things. They dragged people out and they beat them. That's the kind of people that oppose the gospel. Those are the kind of individuals that are unreasonable. Friends, you just can't reason with unreasonable people. Now, I believe the Bible is God's word. And someone who doesn't truly believe that the Bible is God's word, they're not going to accept it. They're not going to reason with it. Paul said, not all men have faith. There in in 2 Thessalonians 3. He says, not not all have faith. For all men have not faith. You know why? Because they're unreasonable. Someone says, well, I believe the Bible. No, you don't. If you really believe the Bible, friends, you would reason with us out of it. You would, you would reason together. You would say, all right, let, let's think about this. Christ has a church. He built it, Matthew 16, 18. He paid for it with his blood, Acts 20, verse 28. It belongs to him. Upon this rock I'll build my church. Now let's reason together. The Baptist church, the Methodist church, the Lutheran church, the Presbyterian church, the Catholic church, the Pentecostal Holiness church, it's not in this book. Now, let's reason. Therefore, it's not 
They are not the church of Christ. Now, why are you in Why are you in those churches? See, but reasonable people will say, you know what, that's right. I'm, I, need to, I need to come out of those churches. Unreasonable people don't have faith because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and they're just not going to hear it. Friends, I hope you're not unreasonable. I hope that you're the kind of individual that's looking for the truth. I hope you're the kind of individual that wants to know the Word of God. Come out to the tent. Come out to the tent. Starts Monday, September the 12th, 7 p.m. each night. And then there's TV every night too. So don't be unreasonable. Come out and study God's Word with us. We hope that you will do that very thing. Till next time, friends. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.